Ooh, chips. Okay. So, um, what I'd like to do is for our last problem is to go through uh, one least operation. So when you have your piece of paper, I got extra. Stuff. Don't worry. Um, what we're going to go over is a one, two, one property. All right. So. The last thing, ladies and gentlemen, so far, in this, so far with logarithms, all we've really talked about is, um, Rachel, how to go from exponential to logarithmic. And then we've also talked about how to evaluate logarithms. Now what we're going, and we also talked about the properties of logarithms by the product property, the quotient property, and the power to power property. So now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to solve logarithmic and exponential equations. All right. So the first property I'm going to talk about is the one-to-one -one property. And I'll go through a basic definition for you guys. Um, so the definition, if I have x to the a equals x to the b, then we know that a has to equal b. All right. Now you might say, well, OK, that might seem with simple sense, but I'm not really understanding. So let's use some real numbers. If I say 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the fifth, you guys can kind of understand that. Well, then x has to be 5, right? OK? So that's why this works. A lot of times what we say is you can say, oh, the bases don't matter. And we can just say that the powers equal one another. OK? So that makes pretty simple sense on its forefront. But now, let's go and take a look at how we're going to apply that. So if I gave you guys an equation that maybe looked like this, 1 over 27 equals uh, 2x minus 1 equals 9 to the x plus 1. All right. So how would you solve that by not applying this, the one-to-one -one property? Well, you can't just say, oh, the bases are going to eliminate, and then the exponents equal each other. Because right now, the bases are not equal to each other, are they? No. So what I need to do is just determine what would be a common base that I could rewrite 1 over 27 to and rewrite 9 to. So what would be a base that I could rewrite them? So if I could, can I rewrite 1 over 27 as a number raised to a power? Yes, Nico? Couldn't you find the common denominator? Um, well, you're kind of looking, yeah, you're kind of not so much the common, uh, you're looking for a common denominator, yes. Like, what is the same number you could raise to both of these numbers? What would be the, small, what would be the number that would be kind of common between them that you could raise to a power? Three. Three. Yes. You can't, well, you can raise 9 to the 27th, but it's going to be a, a rational exponent. And we want to try to stick with whole numbers. So what do I have to raise 3 to to get 1 over 27? Well, let's do it. You guys are right on the ball with the negative, because 3 to the negative power equals 1 over 3 to the first. 3 to the negative second equals 1 over 3 squared. 3 to the negative third equals 1 over 3 cubed. 3 to the negative fourth equals 1 over 3 to the fourth. Does any one of those so far give us 1 over 27? Negative 3, right? So I could say this is 3 to the negative third times 2x minus 1. And then can I rewrite 9 as a base 3? It would be 3 squared, right? Now, before I just start eliminating the bases, I want to make sure we remember something. If you guys remember properties of exponents, we talked about this when we started talking about the properties of logs, we went over to properties of exponents. Um, when I have two exponents and I'm multiplying them, we add the powers, right? When I have two exponents that I'm dividing, we subtract the powers. When I take an exponent and raise it to another power, what do we do with the powers? We multiply them. What I was expecting, what I was showing you was, what I was trying to describe was x to the m times m equals x to the m times n. Right? You multiply them. So what I want you guys to understand is I'm taking this negative 3 and I'm raising it to, this, to the 2x minus 1 power. I'm taking 2 and I'm raising it to the x plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 to the negative third times 2x minus 1 equals 3 to the 2 times x plus 1. So I just rewrote it so you guys understand that, yeah, you multiply these. And I put them in parentheses so we can remember to make sure we apply distributive property. Now, my bases, we're not going to care about our bases because our bases are exactly the same. And now I have an equation that looks something like this, which we can solve for. 
right? Now we can solve for x. So I applied the derivative property. So I get negative 6x plus 3 equals 2x plus 2. I'll add 6x plus 6x, subtract 2, subtract 2. So I get 1 equals 8x, divide by 8, divide by 8, and x equals 1 8. OK, any questions in that regard? I understand, but I just would never think to do that. Well, that's why, we want to, that's why I'm introducing the 1 1 property. If you see powers, right, always try to see, hey, can I get these to the same power cause, or the same base? Because if you can get them to the same base, then you can go and cancel them. Then you can sit, cancel out the bases. Yes? OK. So that's that with that one, OK? That's it.